let's look at how you would draw a particle diagram for a precipitation reaction. You can see an example at the top, um, copper two sulfate and silver nitrate are reacting in a precipitate form. And we want to draw a particle diagram in the speaker. Now, to help you, you should probably write a molecular or net ionic equation, which I've shown here. And if you have trouble looking or uh, write, writing these, go back to my videos on how to do that. So once you have these reactions, you always want to check what your precipitate is because that's going to be found as a solid at the bottom, meaning your ions are going to be bound ionically um, and they will not be dispersed throughout the solution. They are not aqueous. So here I see that I have um, two silver ions for every one sulfate. So I'm going to show that at the bottom. I'm going to put the formulas with their charges. Notice I have two silvers for every one sulfate and I'm going to separate the silvers since they're like chargers and they would just have. And I could do more than one of these. I'm just going to do one formula unit for now um, to correspond to these coefficients. Um, but whatever you do, you could double for everything. So now I have my precipitate at the bottom. Um, notice that I also have another product, copper two nitrate, which um, doesn't appear in my net ionic because they're actually spectator ions. And these would, this would be a strong electrolyte, it would be 100% soluble um, and 100% ionized. So this is going to be in the solution above the precipitate. Um, I'm going to have these as separated ions because it is a strong electrolyte and 100% ionized. Um, and I'm going to put the elements um, or formulas with their charges. I'm going to keep polyatomic ions as one circle. And notice I have one copper for every two nitrates. And again, I can double this if I were doubling that. This is a one-to-one -one ratio, so I have one formula unit of this for every one formula unit of that. Now, you might at this point think you're done, but there's an important piece of information. You need to figure out which of your reactants was limiting, because if both of them were completely used up, there would be no reactants left over at the end. But if one of them is not completely used up and one of them is in excess, that excess is still going to be in the container after the reaction. So it's telling you that copper two sulfate was limiting, okay? So it's actually the silver nitrate that's going to be in the solution. And notice this is an aqueous ionic compound. It's still a strong electrolyte. It would be 100% ionized, found as ions. And for every one silver, there would be one nitrate. So not only is my soluble product, my spectator ions in here, but also my excess reactant that is left over. And notice that even though there is um, silver in the precipitate, there is some silver still in solution because that was not limiting. It was the sulfate in the net ionic equation, if I'm looking at that, was limiting, and that's why there's no sulfate in the solution at all, but still some leftover silver.